aware of allegations circulating on social media about 150 million old age pension theft? Yeah, um, so this is an old matter. Um, I recall Dr. Vindya Prasad raising this matter that they discovered that some of the books might be duplicated by individuals who might be working in gangs or on their own. And the police were asked to look into this matter. In fact, one, she raised it with me one time and I called Hickens directly to say this is a serious matter. We should look at it because this is large sums of money and my big fear at that time was if they draw down the money on someone's book, then the pensioner who goes there would not get their money. And so, you know, sometimes you don't even get a feedback from the pensioner. So this, they told me that it is, um, it's being duplicated. So the police are looking into this matter. This is not a, a new matter now. And I expect that they will take condign action with anyone who is involved in this. Charge them, put them before the court. The Ministry of Human Services and Social Security wishes to advise the pensioners that following the discovery of unauthorized fake old age pension books and the violation of the integrity of the pension delivery system, the Minister of Human Services requested an immediate investigation by the Guyana Police Force into the issue. Because of this investigation, the regular early distribution of old age pension books has been delayed. The Ministry of Human Services wishes to assure pensioners that the 2025 books are currently being printed with new security features to prevent tampering and falsification. The 2025 old age pension books will be available for distribution from December 2024. The ministry is working assiduously to tie in the distribution of these books with the encashment of the December 2025 vouchers in many areas. A detailed distribution schedule of the dates and times for distribution will be posted in all media. 3,000 more 2024 old age pension books with new security features have also been printed to cater for pensioners who have not yet received their books and will be available from the 25th of November onwards. There has been an increase in the number of pensioners over the last three years to over 70,000. We also encourage persons to use the banking system, which does not require any books. Pension is deposited in the first five days of every month into bank accounts. The ministry sincerely regrets any inconvenience to pensioners for the delays but it is critical to improve the integrity and accountability of the pension delivery system in the best interests of the pensioners. The ministry is still awaiting the findings of the investigation launched by the Guyana police force into the fake pension books. That, as of yesterday, the 19th day of um, November 2024, yesterday was what, Tuesday the 19th day, Brutus filed another lawsuit. Let me read what the release says. And this is a release from the lawyers representing Calvin Brutus. HGP Nightly News said we have been authorized, and that is what the lies are saying, we have been authorized and instructed by Calvin Brutus to issue the ensuing release. Calvin Brutus instituted on 19th of November 2024 civil proceedings for malfeasance in public office against several senior members of the Ghana Police Force and the Special Organized Crime Unit. Well, they make it sound like the Special Organized Crime Unit is not part of the Guyana Police Force, but that is what I said. He instituted against several senior members of the Guyana Police Force and the Special Organized Crime Unit. He is asking the court to award him in excess of $400 million in damages. Quite simply, $400 million is not even close to enough for the scale and gravity of the alleged misconduct in public office visited upon Brutus. The public must note that in any functional democracy, the conduct alleged by Brutus in his civil claims is enough to facilitate an investigation and those found to have acted improperly placed before the courts. Our clients' lawful options on these matters remain open 
even as he is pursuing the defendants in civil proceedings for, for misfeasance in public office, for which the corollary criminal sibling is malfeasance in public office. If and when he decides to activate his lawful options, one would hope that no further orders are put in his path, for they stand the risk of facing criminal and civil proceedings for overreach in public office. Surely, the local and international community can agree that the following calls for Mr. Butas are fair and reasonable. One, that an independent criminal investigation be launched into the subject of a civil claims against the, all the named defendants. Two, that a fair and impartial tribunal, perhaps a presidential com commission of inquiry, populated by international experts, be established to inquire into the alleged criminal conduct. In, in ensuring the gauntlet contacts the ground, Mr. Brutus is prepared to do the following anytime and anywhere. One, subject himself to a polygraph test administered by the FBI or Scotland Yard and willingly invites the defendants in his civil claim to do so, to test the veracity of his allegations. Two, invite Scotland Yard or the FBI via the local embassy and I commission to video record and polygraph his witnesses as to the veracity of their claims. Instructions have been given to his counsel to dispatch letters of invitation to the FBI, Scotland Yard, through the uh, Scotland Yard and the relevant embassies. These matters require the weight of expertise that resides in these places. Cooperate with independent investigators in the pursuit of the truth in the issues of the art of the claim he makes against the defendants. Let it be known to all and sundry that Calvin Butas has already documented his claims and cooperated with independent arbiters, including international law enforcement agencies, whose sole concern is to pursue the truth. Fair is not a word in his vocabulary. Butas calls upon the authorities in Guyana to disburden the commission of police of the unique conundrum of the police investigating the police in Guyana and lead, and lead a, a led an independent inquiry. At this stage, the only appropriate course is to summon international impartial professional help. That is what the release states. That is what the release states. They talk about um, civil proceedings for misfeasance in public office and it break it down, misfeasance itself. I'm not sure I write it down. Um, misfeasance is the let me let me get misfeasance is a wrongful exercise of lawful authority. So when they talk about misfeasance, they're talking about the wrongful exercise of lawful authority. And when they talk about malfeasance, they talk is a wrongdoing, especially by public officials. So you have misfeasance and you have malfeasance. So they're claiming both in this um, thing. And then they go on to say, interestingly, they call for an impartial presidential commission of inquiry populated by international experts to be established to inquire into the alleged criminal conduct then they talk about um subject himself to polygraph remember only last week or this same week i tell you i, I am willing to undergo a polygraph with all the statements i have made so you want a polygraph to be administered he's willing to take a polygraph for either fbi scotland yard and then he inviting the defendants to do likewise and and what is interesting here they say they say let it be known let me read this part and then i'm gonna bring you mr Connolly. let it be known to all and sundry that calvin brutus has already documented his claims and cooperated with independent arbiters including international law enforcement agencies whose sole concern is to pursue the truth then it's a fair is not a word, another word in his vocabulary. Well, he maybe he can't talk about fear. When you talk about vocabulary, you talk about something that in a person's um, repertoire of words. But maybe they in the yard. Who knows? Who knows? See, see, let me bring you for exactly this Martin, man. This thing's sweet. This thing's sweet, bad, bad, as you would say. Let me hear your views on this release 
by the attorneys representing uh, Mr. Bruto. I should tell you that those, the persons who signed are Mr. Earl Daniels, Mr. Dominic Bess, yet you born Ali Cock, Usi Anderson, UC Anderson, uh, Rena, uh, uh, Renia Marcus, and Cassidy Norris. Those are the attorneys who signed this uh, missive on oh, behalf yeah. of Mr. Brutus. Yes, Mr. Oh, uh, yeah. Conway. Yes, you see. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps they, they, they are listening, you know, they, 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 are, they are listening to what we were saying all along the time. We say that hey, bring in Scotland Yard, bring in the Royal Canadian Mountain Police, bring in the FBI, because this thing is wide ranging. This thing is this thing is like cancer that spread all over, not, not only allegations against Brutus, allegations against other from the commission, other members of, of, of the force. And then I wish to make the point that there are allegations, so they are presumed to be innocent, but investigation got to be, be, be done. There must be an investigation. And look, Brutus gone, and then with, with a whole set of, of, of senior people, you know, I wonder, you know, what, what, what the morale of the force is like. Those good hard-working police, those honest police, I wonder what they're feeling. And then the, the public perception of the police, you know, what really is happening, you know? And the, the, the government is, is is idle. The government ain't doing anything, but it, it is time for urgent action to be taken so that the public will have confidence in the police. Because if the public doesn't have confidence in the police, they can't solve crime. I always say if there's no public confidence, you get people with eyes who will not see, with ears who will not hear, with tongues who will not smell, with mouth, with tongues who will not speak, with nose who will not smell. Yeah, and and, uh, and and if they don't, they're not going to see, they're not going to hear, they, they're not going to talk, the police can't solve crime. Because the police are not there all the time, they depend on the public to give them information. And if what's going on at the top there, and the public doesn't have confidence in the police, well then woe be unto the police, they can't solve crime. Is the bike that the police are taking, our bike that has papers, I want you guys to see. This is the bike. This, little girl, move from there. this is how they are treating a this is how they're treating a teenager. Watch. Look, Madam, Mommy. Move from there. Talking by pulling the bike. You know what I'm gonna fall, huh? We are not letting go with the bike. Hold on. You're not going with the bike. No. This is all of them that came. Young or you far. Who chuck police and you pulling down the woman with a one foot? Yeah, bare okay. face. Want to see how you have face? Yes. Look at this problem. Yes, you especially you. Good. The Working People's Alliance said it has received information that distribution of the $100,000 cash handout has commenced at several government agencies. However, according to the party, many public servants have contacted us to express their concern that they are being forced to have pictures of their identification cards taken by the personnel doing the distribution. They are also asked to say where they voted at the last election. Those who have refused to follow these instructions are being told that they would be denied the handout. WPA notes that the government has repeatedly said that the only requirement for receiving the handout is the presentation of a valid identification card or passport. The WPA wants the government to answer the following questions. Why these added requirements now? Why does the government want copies of ID cards? What does information about where someone voted at the last election have to do with receiving a cash handout? What is the linkage between elections and the cash handout? Why was there no public announcement that recipients would have to meet these added requirements? What does the government intend to do with the pictures of the ID cards and with information of where people voted at the last election? WPA can only conclude that its initial suspicions that there were hidden motives behind this initiative was not far-fetched. We have always been suspicious that voters rather than all citizens are being targeted for the handout. 
At a time when opposition parties are trying to get GECON to address the issue of voter impersonation and the governing party is stoutly resisting any moves in this direction. The government's forced acquisition of people's ID cards is an ominous sign. Something sinister is afoot. It is not out of place to suggest that this exercise could be linked to an orchestrated effort by the ruling party to tamper with the elections long before election day. If this suggestion has proven to be correct, our country could be in for a rough ride in the lead up to the election. WPA therefore condemns in the strongest terms this latest development. We call on GCOM, local stakeholders, and the international community to take note of this development. We call on the government must explain why it is using the cash handout to bully citizens to tune over their information. In the meantime, we ask Guyanese to refuse to turn over their personal information to the government agents. The Working People's Alliance said it has received information that distribution of the $100,000 cash handout has commenced at several government agencies. However, according to the party, many public servants have contacted us to express their concern that they are being forced to have pictures of their identification cards taken by the personnel doing the distribution. They are also asked to say where they voted at the last election. Those who have refused to follow these instructions are being told that they would be denied the handout. WPA notes that the government has repeatedly said that the only requirement for receiving the handout is the presentation of a valid identification card or passport. The WPA wants the government to answer the following questions. Why these added requirements now? Why does the government want copies of ID cards? What does information about where someone voted at the last election have to It is with profound sadness that I address the tragic accident that occurred earlier today on Sheriff Street. On behalf of the Ministry of Public Works, I extend my deepest condolences to the family and loved ones of the gentleman who tragically lost his life. Our thoughts and prayers are also with those who were injured, and we fervently hope for their swift and complete recovery. This devastating incident serves as a stark and painful reminder of the fragility of life on our roads and the catastrophic consequences that can result from reckless driving. As a government, we remain steadfast in our commitment to enhancing the nation's infrastructure and improving road safety for all. The Sheriff Mandela Road upgrades on the Lamaha Dennis Street corridor, where this unfortunate accident occurred, were developed as part of our broader strategy to modernize Guyana's transportation network. These projects integrate critical safety features, including traffic lights, clearly marked lanes, pedestrian crossings, and traffic signs, all aimed at promoting orderly and safe travel. Despite these advancements, today's tragedy highlights the ongoing challenge of ensuring compliance with traffic laws. President Nicholas Maduro. The United States government has recognized the Venezuelan opposition leader Edmondo Gonzalez as the president-elect of the nation. But this comes months after the Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro had claimed to have won a presidential poll in July. The posting on social media platform X, the American Secretary of State demanded respect for the will of the Venezuelan people. The Biden administration has previously said that Gonzalez had earned majority of the votes in the recently concluded presidential polls on the 28th of July, but failed short of the majority mark. The Gonzalez, who went into exile to Spain earlier in the month, has claimed that he was forced into signing a letter recognizing Nicolas Maduro as the winner of the disputed presidential elections. And upon his arrival in Spain, Gonzalez issued an audio message where he vowed to fight for freedom and for upholding democracy in Venezuela. 
The Venezuelan election body, which is allegedly full of Maduro loyalists, has declared Maduro as the winner of the polls, hours after the polls were closed. But the election body also has refused to provide the detailed vote count of the election. The Venezuela's vice president, Delcy Rodriguez, has said that Gonzalez left the country voluntarily. She has also said that granting him a safe passage out of the country was designed to contribute to political peace in the country. The United States has formally recognized Venezuelan opposition leader Edmundo Gonzalez as the country's president-elect following the disputed July 28th presidential election, Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced Tuesday on X. The Venezuelan people spoke resoundingly on July 28th and made Edmundo Gonzalez the president-elect. Democracy demands respect for the will of the voters, the top U.S. diplomat posted while participating in the G20 summit in Rio de Janeiro. The announcement marks a significant change in U.S. policy towards Venezuela. Up until now, the U.S. and other countries said Gonzalez had won more votes than incumbent leader Nicolas Maduro in July but stopped short of recognizing him as president-elect. It is clear to the United States, to democratic nations around the world, and to independent international organizations that observed the July 28th elections that opposition candidate Edmundo Gonzalez Arusha won the most votes. That makes him the president-elect, a State Department spokesperson told CNN Tuesday. The Venezuelan people overwhelmingly and unequivocally expressed their desire for democratic change. The publicly available voting tally sheets say so, they said. Gonzalez on Tuesday thanked the U.S. for the move, saying, we deeply appreciate the recognition of the sovereign will of all Venezuelans. With Modi coming, Prime Minister India coming just now, wait, you can see all the things that they will spend monies to do to welcome yeah. him. And yeah. it's the way of him coming to bring their supporters back on their side for elections because they recognize that they're losing yeah. their supporters. Yeah. And, and so, you see, this is where their interest is. Their interest is all about being in power holding on to power but they don't care about the ordinary man when we look at the conditions under which and dr Hines, you mentioned it the teachers work we're going to show you some pictures just now we had a beam falling down about two weeks ago hitting a parent on her head bursting her head on the west coast of barbie's bushlot secondary school a couple of days ago, the same teachers at Bushlot Secondary School decided that they're not going to work anymore because of the conditions under which they have to work. This secondary school here is Hope. This school that we're showing here, Hope Town Nursery School. Look what is happening. This is in the schoolyard, a nursery school. And they're, they're tearing down, they tore down half of the building. They blocked up the side that they, they, they tore down. And the children are in school. You see, they put the zinc there. The children are beyond, beyond that zinc. President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali welcomed the Prime Minister of India, the Honorable Sri Narendra Modi, Tuesday night at the Chedi Jagan International Airport. The Prime Minister was joined by his high-level delegation of government officials. PM Narendra Modi arrives in Guyana, photo Tariq Mohammed. President Ali was joined by Prime Minister, Brigadier, Reddit, Mark Phillips, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Hugh Todd, the Indian High Commissioner to Guyana, Dr. Amit Telang, and other government officials. It is anticipated that the two leaders will discuss a wide range of topics, with a focus on military cooperation and tackling the problems caused by climate change. The two countries also agreed to create working groups in agriculture and food production, information and communications technology, energy, Ayurvedic and wellness, natural medicine and development, and defense, among other areas to further the bilateral cooperation agenda. During his visit, Prime Minister Modi will engage in summit-level bilateral discussions discussions with President Ali. Additionally, he will co-chair the Second India CARICOM Summit in Diana alongside Prime Minister of Grenada, Dickon Mitchell, and President Ali. PM Modi is also scheduled to address the National Assembly, the Indian community, and the Indian diaspora in Guyana. PM Modi's visit to Guyana comes at the invitation of President Ali. This is the first visit of an Indian Prime Minister to Guyana in 56 years. This visit underlines the historically robust relations between India and Guyana. The two nations established diplomatic relations on May 26, 1966. Since then, the two nations have engaged in a thriving program of economic, scientific, technical, and cultural cooperation, 
with the Indian government providing Guyana with substantial development assistance. The two nations have been directly connected in mutual investments in sustainable development and renewable energy. Guyana has also received lines of credit from India for a number of developmental initiatives, including the building of roads, bridges, and hospitals. In January 2023, President Ali visited India as the chief guest of the 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Diwas, where he was awarded the Pravasi Bharatiya Salmon. Rock the fucking ship tonight. Let me rock it, cement. Cement, buddy, do this. No. And wanting to speak about this a while now, I just, um, I was a bit busy. I had, I have a lot of things that I'm handling right now. You know, I don't wish to discuss it, but let's just say that I wanted to speak about this topic for quite a while because I've realized that whole culture in music is becoming our main culture in music it seems like the only way to advance as a female black singer today is to take off all your clothes expose yourself skin out look anyhow you know talk about yourself anyhow talk about other people anyhow it seems as if to rise as a black female within the music cultural space today you literally need to be a hoe I want to read the comment to tell her i see you trying really hard you just try really hard but you need to sing some nasty songs now let me ask this question is this true Please comment and let me know that you, you, if you believe in order for women, black women of 2024 to make good music, we need to be nasty. We need to sing about raw sex. We need to talk about we pum pum. We need to talk about how tight we pum pum tight. We need to talk about how much man is lash we pum pum. Please let me know if you agree with that topic because let me know if that's the only interesting thing that black women can sing about in music in 2024. Do you agree? Because in my opinion, I see Sabrina Carpenter. Thinking about me, I'm like, oh, isn't that sweet? I guess so. So you can't sleep, baby, I know. That's that me espresso. Move it up, down, left, right, oh. Switch it up like Nintendo. So you can't sleep, baby, I know. That's that me espresso. No part me here yet about how Sabrina pum pum tight. Me ain't hear yet about how Sabrina tight pum pum is bring the man them to the yard. I ain't hear yet about how Sabrina tight pum pum is by Shakir and how me hear yet about how Sabrina got lash a friend out of friend man. Why is it there is a standard it seems for black female singers to be literal whores now in order to sell music? I don't understand what's going on. When did this become the standard for us? When? And why me girl Ernest can't sing, you know, um, sing her nice... She, it's a sexual song. It's a sexy song. But it's sensual. I think that we have lost the art of sensuality. I really think that women have lost the art of femininity and sensuality and we believe that over sexuality is sensuality that is not true i think we have allowed too many sex workers strippers and people who participate in the sex trade to have a huge spotlight so now they are the ones with the mic in their hands telling women what is sexy no no listen to me if you're a housewife you're a school teacher you're a woman who works at the bank you have a job you're a church lady you're a woman who actually cares about her character and actually wants to grow her character in order to respect herself Please do not listen to these songs that telling you that you need to be a hoe in order to be sexy. It is not true. You do not need to be a hoe to be sexy. You don't need to over-sexualize yourself. There is a difference between sex over-sexuality and sensuality. What is going on? 
Why is people running up telling me sweet nice friend um, Ernesto who's singing about I need a chocolate boy I need a chocolate boy. Why are we telling Ernesta that she needs to sing more nasty song? No, she just try really hard. Ernesta does not try really hard. Ernesta is an excellent artist. She's an excellent singer. So for y'all to tell Ernesta she trying really hard, instead of telling these garbage musicians that Guyanese people is run and sing, and they try really hard because that is not music. Since when did calling people whores and singing skin and opening your pokey is, is, is music? But an actual musician who knows how to sing, who knows how to write songs, who is clever, who is intellectual, whose music has nice metaphors and similes, it's very creative writing. We telling that person that they're trying hard and how they need to be more of a hoe in order to make music. What nonsense is this? I can't, I can't deal with it. I really cannot deal with it. And this is the same marketplace that y'all want people with talent to come on. When we are putting anybody on a pedestal, they don't need to have talent. All they need to do is to be able to go to Dr. Miami and do the ass or to go over to Brazil and do the ass or do the bobby or something. We, we don't care about talent anymore. To be a musician, you don't even need to do no music anymore. It's so disrespectful to black women. To tell us that the only way in which we sh could get your black attention is if we make ourselves sexual puppets for your very cheap, for people's very cheap attention. I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate it at all. Um, my cousin Paulette says the over-sexualized representation is to keep, keep black women regressive. The more you can teach black women to be desperate, the more you can control them. I don't agree with this whole culture and someone. It is tainting the music industry. Absolutely, Paulette. And let me know. One of the reasons I came on this live is to give you all a little more idea of how the music industry works. Right? Oh, um, Miguel said it's only in the Caribbean have this hun because in other parts of the world they don't have that. Miguel, I'm so sorry to say that is not true because it's not only in the Caribbean. I would like to say it is happening mainly in the black community. So whether it's in the black community in the Caribbean, whether it's in the black community in America, wherever the black community is, you are we are noticing that the black women female singers are all being whores. want to read the comment to tell her i see you trying really hard you just try really hard but you need to sing some nasty songs now let me ask this question is this true please comment and let me know that you you if you believe in order for women black women of 2024 to make good music we need to be nasty we need to sing about raw sex we need to talk about we pom pom we need to talk about how tight we pom pom tight we need to talk about how much man is lash we pom pom please let me know if you agree with that topic because let me know if that's the only interesting thing that black women can sing about in music in 2024 do you agree because in my opinion, I see Sabrina Carpenter thinking about me. I'm like, oh, isn't that sweet? I guess so. So you can't sleep, baby. I know that's that me espresso. Move it up, down, left, right, oh, switch it up like Nintendo. So you can't sleep, baby. I know that's that me espresso. No part me here yet about how Sabrina pum pum tight. Me ain't hear yet about how Sabrina tight pum pum is bring the man them to the yard. I ain't hear yet about how Sabrina tight pum pum is by Shakir and how me ain't hear yet about how Sabrina got lash a friend, Arab's friend man. Why is it there is a standard, it seems, for black female singers to be literal whores now in order to sell music? I don't understand what's going on. When did this become the standard for us? When? And why Miguel Ernesta can't sing, you know, um, sing her nice... She, it's a sexual song. It's a sexy song. But it's sensual. I think that we have lost the art of sensuality. I really think that women have lost 
the art of femininity and sensuality and we believe that over sexuality is sensuality that is not true i think we have allowed too many sex workers strippers and people who participate in the sex trade to have a huge spotlight so now they are the ones with the mic in their hands telling women what is sexy no no listen to me if you're a housewife you're a school teacher you're a woman who works at the bank you have a job you're a church lady you're a woman who actually cares about her character and actually wants to grow her character in order to respect herself Please do not listen to these songs that telling you that you need to be a hoe in order to be sexy. It is not true. You do not need to be a hoe to be sexy. You don't need to over-sexualize yourself. There is a difference between sex over-sexuality and sensuality. What is going on? Why is people running up telling me, sweet, nice friend, um, Ernesto, who's singing about, I need a chocolate boy. I need, I need a chocolate boy. Why are we telling Ernesta that she needs to sing more nasty songs? No, she just try really hard. Ernesta does not try really hard. Ernesta is an excellent artist. She's an excellent singer. So for y'all to tell Ernesta she trying really hard, instead of telling these garbage me. Hey, no, no, no. I love you bad. I love it. I love you bad. <laughs> Why is doggy day breaking bells around the Me world? The ring. Let these fuckers know royal treatment. Royal <laughs> treat. <laughs> Why know me? You fucking business. Go wake up. Go wake Thank up. You. Thank Go you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's because they make nobody else can get the breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, right? Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm one of the best in the world that ever did it, okay? Everybody talking, everybody complaining. What is wrong with them, though? Thank like, you. why everybody worried about doggy? Thank you gotta you. get money to travel. You gotta get visas to come places. Thank I'm you. I'm not fucking deport your immigrant. You know what's causing uh, this world is this? Plus with royal treatment. With royal treatment, yeah. Royal treatment. <laughs> 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 what's everybody? What's going on with them? What's going yeah, on with them? The, well, they're so mad because you know me at breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> I was on live yesterday. I was on live yesterday. I'm the one who was on live at the airport in the plane. What's the problem? You. What was Thank the problem? you. Men always what the problem. problem. Anybody have a right to post what they want to post on the fucking internet? Thank you. I'm a public figure. You know? I Thank don't believe in no you. hiding. What's the problem? <laughs> Some people say going by a bed or something like I'm treaty. I take a Thank fucking you. straight flight VIP business class. Thank you. Hours to my destination. Morning. I didn't have to stick out the airport. I didn't have no red flag. I didn't have Man. the question asking me questions. I... They didn't revoke. They didn't revoke me. I didn't get tore back. Welcome. But, but, but I'm just telling them you was the first body waiting up me fucking bed where you land. Yeah, <laughs> correct. You waiting up the bed. <laughs> to make sure that your land yeah, safe. Correct. You don't want to fuck with these a lot, people. Listen, a lot of fools be on this internet, you know. That's why I make them a fucking ass. They think they know everything. They know Thank nothing. You. Nothing they know, know. Nothing. Thank you. They think they know everything. The thing. Couple days ago, dog, he's a deport. You get deported. My dad come back. You. My dad. It's crass. Left people are let them live their life. Some of y'all need to go to sport and travel. I travel with money. Stop begging. This is what I need to do. Some people never go to play, but I want to tell you how inside the place be. You know? Oh, God. I, I don't know. <laughs> Molly, I told you I was coming home, Molly. I told you I was coming home. <laughs> I keep oh, going. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he just, hey, Farron Dali, he just created the drama. <laughs> Dog, he just created the fucking drama. He just yeah. created it. That's a good morning. <laughs> but listen, I love it. When I, I say I love it, I love it. I love, I love it. I say, look this fucking doggy and these royals make me a sleep back from this hour. <laughs> Come here, call me me a sleep back. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, Why would God. I feel? Listen, I feel so nice like if it was me. Yeah. I feel so nice 
at your land safe for the time I see for the time I get a call I said bam yeah. <laughs> everything all right bam yes I like that <laughs> but this was just telling them me and you might go on on the internet but we good no, we good we good we good yeah we the good. Is there. you must fucking problems me and dog in the storm behind the scenes yeah. We good, we good, we good, we are just a good. And you do nothing wrong, I don't know why they think the thing is. You thank do you. nothing wrong. Thank you. Everybody about this see dark, he's traveling around, that is why I went like they wanna don't start it. Oh, oh look at this, you know. They can't fucking come back, track the sound culture, and jack can't say they don't say it on the street. Like eh, eh. <laughs> plus it'll be fourth class. <laughs> Plus, let them first class. Let me break it up to you. The reason I buy a first class ticket because I don't really hassle and all these questions. I'm a businessman, legally <laughs> businessman. You don't ask me no question. Right now, you're sitting, in, you're sitting in a big deal. I don't get a big time hotel. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Very big time, yeah. Some of the kids leave me. Like, oh. I'm the fucking body Thank down. Thank you. Oh God. Thank Some you. Some of you got lots of money. We can't, we can't enjoy. Let me enjoy. Thank it. you. It's good. Ooh. Family is good. Friends is good. Dog is good. What's the problem? The what order, is the no, problem? She ain't get, she ain't get she luck. That's why them cost. Yeah. Me, it's, it's true. Me got me luck, so that's why they costing me. Yeah. Yeah. It because they mean no money. What, next what, what that? You need to sell the people them. You don't stay tomorrow for the FBI. Yeah. 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 That's why yeah. they don't do you nothing. Oh. My God. Trump's wearing my car in the morning. Come back, sir. I'll see you scotch in the comment. Melly Bell right for Senator. You run your arm. You sell shows of fucking BM so right. <laughs> Melly Bell right. Hello. Ben. It's business. I roll it. It's fucking business. I roll it. You hear me? Uh, critics are rolling. <laughs> we rolling. <laughs> oh my God! Hey. Oh God! Oh. But, that place, but the place cold, no buy. Oh I got jacket and well dressed. I got stuff. Yeah, Welcome, see yeah. how you going? It's I cold. Meet you last night. It's mm. cold. Yeah, it's cold. But I make sure you but go in the hotel and everything. John, I cost a pretty cold. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do your people take care of me too? Your people take care of me. Thank you. Well taken care of. That's what I like. That's a royal treatment. Royal. I must bring up ice. But to make up ice. Yes. 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 Yeah. Then we got a kind of fucking contact on the guy now on his internet. <laughs> they could call anybody. 